150 years after Darwin's publication of The Origin of Species, evolutionary biology continues to be an exciting field of scientific research and discovery. Darwin's theory of natural selection involved inheritance of variation from adult to offspring. Darwin never knew the exact mechanism for this genetic inheritance. Today we know it as DNA. Darwin had tremendously good intuition about how the world worked. And what's remarkable to me is that he was able to devise a very clever outlook on all of this with really very rudimentary information. He could look at how organisms were distributed, for example, on the globe, and look at the details of how barnacles were constructed. From those kinds of observations, he was able to extract a very general theory of how this all worked. And, you know, the notion of natural selection the notion of the tree of life uh, emerged from these kind of detailed observations. Today, evolutionary biologists can test ideas about evolution experimentally by watching it happen in a laboratory. Studying the simplest organisms of all, microscopic viruses that Darwin never knew existed, scientists are able to investigate evolution at the molecular level. Darwin's work on natural selection is essential to our understanding of the way viruses evolve. It completely accounts for the kinds of traits that we can measure in the laboratory, the traits that viruses show, and the way that they change through time before our very eyes. When we create environments in the laboratory and challenge a virus population with becoming better adapted to those environments, the way that they change is entirely described through natural selection. Experimental understanding of how evolution works will help in the discovery of new medicines and therapies to combat infectious diseases. And in the laboratory, what we try to do is look at the evolution of viruses, get a better understanding of how they evolve, what are the circumstances that make them vulnerable to intervention by certain therapies, and then we try to especially capitalize on those types of therapies to control epidemics and to prevent the spread of viruses. Building on Darwin's theories, scientists are taking evolutionary biology into new and exciting directions that Darwin could never have imagined. I would love to bring Darwin into my lab and to show him that he was right on with understanding how natural selection proceeds, even though he didn't have a very good understanding, he didn't have much of an understanding at all of what it was that was being passed between generations. To be able to show him what DNA looks like, how we can easily obtain it from real organisms, how we can look at differences in DNA for individuals in a population, that is the variation that he talked about as necessary to drive natural selection. Rapid evolution can be seen in living creatures larger than viruses as well. Scientists are studying toads that are evolving right in front of our eyes. One of the most curious things about Darwin's work is he believed fundamentally that um, change in the natural world, the kind of change that would lead to speciation, the formation of new species, was gradual. It was slow. It would take a long period of time. Whereas what we know today is that evolution can happen very rapidly. It can happen right on the same pace with environmental changes, even very rapid environmental changes. Some very good examples have come from study of amphibians and reptiles, and there's, there's one that, that really stands out, and that's the cane toad. So cane toads were introduced into Australia in 1935. They come from Central and South America. They like relatively humid, relatively wet, jungly sorts of places. And yet, most of Australia is not like that. You don't have to get too far into the interior and it starts to get pretty dry. The cane toads didn't seem to understand that they weren't supposed to be living in this much drier environment. And at the point where people expected them to stop moving based on where they were able to live in their native range, they were moving faster and faster. Cane toads were in fact evolving. What looks like it happened is as they moved into this drier environment, they were getting longer legs, they moved faster, they also were affecting the predator populations there. So as snakes would eat the cane toads, if they got a big enough dose of this toxin, they died. The surviving snakes and their descendants had smaller heads. So not only do we have the cane toad evolving to deal with this new environment, but these predators, these kind of bystander species, were evolving in response to this invader. 
Today, evolutionary biologists continue to build upon Darwin's legacy, further developing his theories with novel discoveries, new tools, and fresh insights. I think the base paradigm that, that Darwin laid out for us has survived the first 150 years extremely well, and I think there's every reason to believe that 100 years from now, the core of it is still going to be just as useful. The fact that this idea could survive and, and in fact be strengthened by the discovery of DNA as the mechanism of inheritance and all we've learned about genetics since then um, suggests that, that this is a pretty durable idea.